Ellen DeGeneres, J.K. Rowling, Morgan Wallen, R. Kelly, Harvey Winston, Johnny Depp, Pierce Morgan, and recently Travis Scott. All these people have one thing in common. They've been canceled or they're currently being canceled at this moment. The rise of cancel culture and the idea of canceling someone coincides with a familiar pattern. A celebrity or another public figure that does something that offends a certain group or offends just someone. Most of the time people are canceled because they are a public figure with the influence over a huge audience. And at times they have said something that could partially harm a person, a group in particular, or even a community. For example, many of those that have been canceled have received public backlash following accusations of violence, sexist, racist, homophobic, or transphobic activities or comments. In this debate, I will bring up my stance that cancel culture has been a benefit to American society. My supporting points being that it makes one aware of issues, makes us more woke, holds others accountable, and gives smaller groups of people a voice. I will now move on to my first point that cancel culture has been a benefit to American society by making those by making us know more about is issues that we know little about. Society today we begin to reassess our identities. We also question where we belong, what we believe, and together as a group. It's terms like hashtag me too and woke and even fake news that have a major following today. Those are words today that we never thought we would ever hear. But they made a statement. According to Daryl McCain in his article, American's Great Awakening, published by the Quarant Magazine in July 2021, he states, Overall, 44% of Americans say that they have heard at least a fair amount about the phrase, including 22% have heard about a fair deal or what the issue may hold. These statistics are given proof that society is conforming and willing to change for the sake of it. But you might be wondering, what are these topics that we can gain knowledge from? What is their importance of today? According to Kelly Sadler in her article, Top 10 Recent Examples of Cancel Culture, published by the Washington Times in February 2021, she states, the hashtag Me Too Twitter campaign, the Black Lives Matter movement, social media issues, and gender identity have all been included in elements of cancel culture. Although we may think these issues have little significance, they have impacted our younger generations. In society today, we are constantly learning, growing, and finding out whether or not we want to be a part of certain things, or if we conform into a group. With that in mind, we are supposed to be optimistic and non-discriminatory. How many of you here are just like that? This brings me to my second point, that cancel culture has been a benefit to American society by holding people accountable, especially people that have a huge influence over a small or large group of people. Yes, we must create a space where people, where people can make mistakes, even if they're just having a bad day or it's just wrong occasionally. I'm pretty sure everyone in this room has done something to offend someone, but we spent time, we held ourselves accountable, we reflected, and we were respectful afterwards. According to Pippa Norris in her article, Cancel Culture, Myth or Reality, published by Public Studies in August 2020, she states, consider situations like those where a politician is caught hurling a racial slur on a hot microphone, or a senior executive leaked emails are found to be riddled with offensive homophobic references. While it's certainly possible that these incidents are completely out of character for them, what does it show who they are? It reflects on what kind of person they truly are. It shows not only you, but it shows everybody else. Shouldn't the same rules apply in all circumstances like this? Cancel culture's main top priority is holding others accountable. According to Dana Brown Lee in her article, is cancel culture really just long overdue accountability or for accountability for the privilege? Published in Forbes by in Forbes, July 2020, she states, more than half, 58% of US adults say in general calling others out on social media helps them be more accountable. Yes, celebrities should be held accountable, but as a society, we should be leading by example, preaching what we want to see. I will now go on to my third and last supporting point, that cancel culture has been a benefit to American society by giving similar or minorities a voice. Ever since the early 2017, Americans made this shift about being open about certain topics, race, 
ethnicity, and even gender. According to Steve Kressler in his article, Social Justice 101, Intro to Cap Cancel Culture, published by The Academic Questions in June 2020, he states, Cancel culture gives powers to minorities that historically have not had the luxury of having that. It shines more light upon them and is powerful for and is powerful to those that have not been shown justice before. Think about it. For example, COVID has happened. A lot has come with COVID, especially anti-Asian hate. That's one example of why we should be more, we should hold people more accountable and it shows minorities that, hey, we have your back in the end. I will now move on to my closing statements to wrap up my argument. Overall, I gave my stance that cancel culture has been a benefit to American society, along with my supporting points being that it makes one aware of issues, makes them woke, holds others accountable, and gives smaller groups of people a voice. Shouldn't we as an Americans, society, as a whole, be holding each other accountable, helping us grow and know more about issues today? If your answer is yes, why not consider cancel culture? Thank you.